Hey, John, and also welcome to all of our viewers today. How are you doing, John? I'm good, Aiden. I'm uh, actually pretty excited to be wearing our new shirts. Uh, mine just arrived uh, the other day. Uh, I think Ivan, our, our designer, did a great job. I see you're wearing yours as well. Yeah, you know what? And I, uh, I love the colors. I love this, like, this blue. I, I think it's like navy. It's, uh, it's a drastic change from the usual black, but I think we can use brighter colors this time around. So look, I'm uh, totally excited about today's episode of Guru's Cloud Connect. Uh, given what's going on right now, um, we know that uh, some of the global supply chains are going through some um, interesting transformations yeah. and challenges, of course. Uh, so we'll be looking at how you can prepare your business for a quick shift, um, how you can prepare to overcome some of the common struggles uh, in 2020. And uh, we'll be looking at the tools, the best systems, and some of the takeaways from what's changing in the market. And, you know, uh, excited to announce we have not one but two guest speakers this time around. Uh, our first is going to be Dave Birdsall, who is actually a business development executive at Guru Solutions, or sponsor, as you all know. Uh, he's going to be speaking from years of experience working with different facets of the manufacturing and supply chain verticals. Our second guest, uh, Jorge Latore, not only has um, many, many years of experience in supply chain, having worked at uh, everything from a mid-sized manufacturer to two well-known global multinationals. But today, he's actually the supply planner for one of the largest packaged consumer goods companies in the world. So he's going to be speaking a little bit from his perspective and what he's seeing is changing in the market. Welcome to Guru's Cloud Connect, your one-stop tech talk where we discover the best business tools with the experts behind them. Filmed on set in a live setting with our gurus in Montreal. Guru Solutions is North America's largest Oracle NetSuite ERP services provider. Visit their website at gurusolutions.com with your hosts, Ethan Bozoglu and John Serino. Hey, Dave. Hi, Jorge. Uh, happy to welcome you both to our new and improved remote set as we're still in the work from home phase. Uh, very happy to have you both on board. And, you know, we'll let John kick it off. Yeah, welcome, guys. So, uh, Dave, we know we know you already. Of course, you're one of our own. We work with you all the time. And uh, what I kind of want to do is uh, get to know Jorge a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and give us a bit on your background? Sure, thanks. Uh, yeah, I've uh, worked in supply chain for the better part of the last 10 years. Um, uh, I've worked in multiple organizations, uh, some of which are you know, best in class, uh, and also worked in organizations that had, you know, pretty small uh, departments and even helped implementing uh, uh, brand new supply chain organizations within companies. Uh, I just want to go back to basics a little bit and maybe address, you know, what is supply chain exactly? How does it work for different companies of different sizes? So you can think of supply chain as anytime physical product is moving through your organization. So that's everything from mm. how you requisition things. If you're a manufacturer, how you go about getting the components and assemblies that you're going to use to build your product. Um, if you're a distributor, how you get your inventory so that you can fulfill for, for your end customer. So basically, anyone that has pick, pack, ship, anyone that has a procurement department, you are part of a supply chain. Can you uh, talk to us a little bit about what would be some of the pain points uh, within the industry? It's very easy to have, uh, to make sure that you have a part available when you have 10 parts. The problem becomes when you have 1,000 parts, 10,000 parts that you're managing, right. that's where you have, I think, a lot of the pain points that come from uh, the supply chain world, because at, at its core, it's a very simple concept, right? It's just making sure that you have the stuff that you need. Um, as, like I said, as volume increases, I think that's one of the biggest thing, what, one of the biggest pain points that uh, organizations see. And it is also one of the big, biggest deterrents, deterrents for organizations to grow as fast as they possibly could. So it's twofold in that, in that you need to be able to deliver for your customers and fulfill your side of, of your supplier agreements, but you also need to be able to source in a responsible way. And you need to have visibility over what you need to sell, what your demand will be, you know, seasonally and, and throughout time and for new product launches. And so that's what the biggest pain point that I hear is that people who, you know, mid-sized companies who have outgrown their, their current system or who even don't have a system and are doing things, you know, 
all in, in Excel or something like that are, are really running into situations where they're not finding out about a, a breakdown in their supply chain or something that they're unable to fill until it's too late. And so they're, they're doing this with email and Excel and they don't find out until, until right before they were supposed to deliver something and there's a critical component missing and they have to, you know, to stop, stop manufacturing, stop a routing or send an incomplete truck because they, they didn't have that critical component. What is the impact to a company for, for missing out on uh, production or hitting a delivery, uh, meeting a deadline? One of the things that I think supply chain managers and supply chain planners need to be able to do is to let the system do the heavy work, the heavy lifting, so that you have time to look at those um, outliers, right? And, 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 right. and manage those, and manage those. Sort of managing by exception, I think it's like the main thing there. How do you reconcile between manual projections and Excel spreadsheets versus what does the system come in and helping streamline some of that for you? Most businesses do 80% of their business comes from only 20% of their inventory, right? Right. And, and, it's, and that's great, but that other 80% of your inventory is important and, and, and a lot of times it's strategic, right? So um, if you have, just as, as, as an example, you know, if you're managing 3,000 components, which in today's manufacturing environment is actually pretty small, right? Uh, you cannot expect one person or even a team of people to take a look at every single item, every single day, week, month, right? You need to be able to let the system do all the heavy lifting and tell you, hey, by the way, it looks like on this item that you, sell, that you only sell one of a year, uh, you're, go you're getting low. And by the way, your uh, lead time on this item is super long, so you should start looking at it now. It's super important to understand and to track the uh, inventory that is running low, but it's uh, also important to understand and track the inventory that you have available. Um, especially in engineer to order, for example, where uh, you might have, uh, you might need one part uh, for one project one time, like a, a specific welding torch and you order it and then you have it in the, in the back somewhere and you forget you have it in a year and a half later, you need this welding torch for a new project and you find yourself reordering again. One of the big things about supply chain is, is competing, competing principles, right? You have, you want to be able to satisfy your customer's needs as much as possible while also keeping your inventory as low as possible, right? And it is, it is getting that balance uh, what will allow, determine if your supply chain is, is successful or not. Because believe it or not, if you have um, a service level of 100%, that just means that your uh, inventory levels are probably incredibly high. And while that would be great for... Uh, some organizations, and I'm not saying this is a blanket statement, and there's some organizations that need to have 100% um, service level. Uh, most organizations want to stay around like 96 to 99 in order to keep inventory levels um, down. That's where having a, having the right tool set, I think, is is hugely valuable. You know, so being able to do sales-based forecasting in an engineer-to-order uh, scenario like you were talking about, John, and then also being able to, to model things like linear regression and being able to model seasonal averages so that you know that, for instance, hey, we're way above safety stock of this particular, um, of this particular item or component, but there's a reason. There's a higher seasonal demand. And so, and so that's when having flexible tools to, to run supply plans, multi-scenario, and to you know, determine if you're above safety stock or not, if you can fulfill with quantity on hand or if you have to order, and even to automate a lot of that, you know, PO and work order creation. Um, because again, the more that we can automate, the more that we can have people basically just checking things off and approving as opposed to going through and doing the manual entry, the better from, you know, hit, getting things correct in the system, you know, not making data errors and freeing up your supply chain people to, to manage the exceptions and to, to deal with the, the critical shortages. You know, um, I know both of you guys have a lot of experience in the, the industry. Um, wondering if you have any, you know, horror stories without naming any names of, uh, you know, a supply chain business that still runs on spreadsheets and manual, manual Excel. I, I know a, a mid, a mid size, um, mid size manufacturer in the defense aerospace where, um, you know, they're a, a critical supplier for a, for a jet engine company. And they're, uh, the jet engine company that they're supplying literally has an employee in their business, um, you know, 
checking up on these things manually, just because when you have lead times that long and you have, you know, contracts with Boeing and Airbus and these people who absolutely need their engines when they need them. And you make a, a sub you know, a, a component of a critical sub assembly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's actually, it, it's worth it for them to staff a, a, you know, someone who's a vendor of theirs just to avoid having a, a delay. And so in some of the contract manufacturing and things like that, it's not even an uncommon arrangement where, where people are, are spending huge amounts of money because they don't have proper systems in place. We know that it's different for large and mid-size uh, manufacturers. Uh, can you can you guys talk to us a little bit about um, what the differences are and, and how they're adapting? In my opinion, at least, working at, at a smaller scale uh, will provide will will mean that a supply chain needs to be a lot more dynamic, right, than working in like a massive company. And what I mean by dynamic is that when you have when you're constantly sourcing and you're in a, in a more immature stage of your supply chain and you're constantly uh, looking at different uh, partners, you're looking at different possible components and possible um, new contracts and all of that, a lot of the things that affect the supply chain are constantly going to be changing. I'm talking about the lead time. I'm talking about maybe a part number. I'm talking about, you know, uh, other, you know, other attributes that you're giving to each one of your components. And, when you have that much dynamic movement in a small company, um, you want to be able to make it as easy as possible and as quick as possible to like push a button, make a change, and for that change that is affecting a hundred different parts to just flow through your organization and through your system, so that I don't have to go to my to my purchasing person and say, "Hey, by the way, uh, before this part we were ordering it from X Y Z, now we're ordering it from A B C, and now the lead time has changed from a month to two months." You want to be able to just push a button and for all of that, uh, all of that uh, information to just be quickly disseminated. Uh, and, you know, especially in smaller companies where everything is constantly changing. When you look at smaller places, these people have to wear multiple hats. And uh, so having a system where like all this information is in an easy to look at dashboard or system that is very easy to navigate, it's key. Otherwise, you're spending hours switching between screens and between systems. Uh, so that definitely has efficiencies. I think that one of the things that we see, you know, in consulting is that people's journey into managing their supply chain often changes based on the, the size of their organization. You know, often people will start off as a small organization managing inventory and they'll, they'll phase into it. They'll start maybe tracking things like their minimum, maximum quantities, safety stock and lead times. And then they'll move into where they're doing some sales-based, uh, you know, supply supply and planning and then they'll and so then they'll be taking a look at you know hey do we have enough inventory to fulfill all of the, you know everything that we've promised to our customers and then they'll move into saying how can we better utilize cash how can we you know order just in time and then you know once people start seeing the benefit from that and once they get to you know be a a larger more mature company where they have people focusing on individual parts of the supply chain like Jorge was talking about then you start really running into multi-scenario, you know, gross requirement modeling and, and things where you, you already have the data, you already have the systems and it's about, you know, having someone who's a ninja at one specific side of that system. What are some of the short-term solutions to rapid change? There's been renewed interest in people, um, in people looking at automating supply chains, supply chain changes because we're in a situation now where it's impossible for someone to manage this manually. You know, and so people who, people who don't have, um, so, you know, architecture built around their supply chain are, are having to make choices in essence of, of what they're going to pay the, the closest attention to. And so they're, now they have the data and now they're constantly updating these things and they're looking at ways that they can, you know, use that in the short term to meet their demand. In the long term, they're establishing these systems so that as, you know, you have supply disruptions and continued supply disruptions in different parts of the world or different parts of the country that they can change their sourcing and stay on top of those things. And then in the, in the long term, they're looking at, you know, as use of cash becomes extremely important, how can they take all the data that they've collected and all the infrastructure that they've, you know, trained on and invested in, and how can they use that to drive operational excellence around better use of cash, you know, better, better inventory management, 
moving to just in time. What are some of the biggest shifts and some of the biggest impacts that we're seeing COVID having on the supply chain market? We are now telling customers, hey, this is what we're producing. And they're saying, just give, give it all to us, right? So we, we have to make some pretty tough decisions on who to supply, who not to supply, when to supply them. And it's something that I've never seen happening in my, my history uh, working in supply chain, just basically having an unlimited demand for the product that you produce. Um, you know, in addition to, to having that, which is putting already uh, a lot of pressure on, on our capacity constraint lines, then we're also seeing, uh, <clears throat> uh, we're seeing also uh, other, other things that are happening because of the, of the COVID-19 crisis, like, you know, seeing a lack of staff at some of our manufacturing facilities, a uh, lack of drivers because of, 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 the, because of, the, of the crisis. And, uh, and like Dave said, you know, having a system that will take all that information and be able to rebalance your existing inventory, right? And also, not only that, but also looking forward that where you can say, hey, by the way, this, this, what we're going through right now is not the new norm. So I can take this insane demand spikes out of my, my forward-looking view, not only doing that, but saying, hey, right. I, think, I think that uh, because people are buying so much stuff, there's a chance that there's going to be a golly at the end of this on what we are and what we need, right? Mm -hmm. And being able to put all those inputs into a system, um, whether it's a, 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 a software system or just a system within your organization, it's, it's very important. We have an understanding of the, the short-term challenges. Um, what do you think are some of the long-term solutions or some of the long-term changes we can expect? Uh, if I was a the CEO of, of, of the company that I work for, I would, I would highly recommend that we start sourcing more locally, right? I mean, granted, this is sort of like a black swan event. Hopefully it will never happen again, but uh, I'm definitely seeing like the chinks in the armor, right? I mean, it is very easy to say, hey, I'm going to save some money by ordering stuff in the cheapest possible place. But if that place happens to be a place that could get hit by something like this, uh, absolutely, uh, you know, or, uh, making sure that at the very least you have contingency plans for stuff like that is, is important. When you say uh, when, when you know, you're, you're missing out on parts or, or important resources that come from a place that can get hit from something like this, that could happen anywhere. It could be any country. Um, as, as we've seen in history, it could happen anywhere. And ultimately, I think you're correct that we're, we're facing a unique situation where, um, I think it was Dave who said it earlier, we're facing a unique situation that we haven't seen before where supply chain is, is uh, impacted globally like this. I'm in the, uh, the East Coast of the United States. And so there's a lot of defense aerospace um, production. And so especially, you know, things like defense contracts where those are legislated and those are, you know, have to be um, either produced here or they are because lead times are so long. And so having, um, having local manufacturing and th is, uh, is extremely beneficial. Um, different people are, are, are affected in completely different ways because you have defense aerospace where right now their challenge is that they can't, they can't manufacture as quickly because they have to spread people out. You know, they have to spread their shifts out. They have to spread their, their assembly lines out. So they still have the demand, but they're facing a completely different challenge in that now they need to make sure they can still hit their metrics. Whereas you have other people who are manufacturing consumer products who are, you know, now switching to now you have, you know, alcohol manufacturers who are making hand sanitizer and you have, you know, clothing manufacturers who are making masks and things. So there's yeah. some, some people are facing a demand side challenge here and some people are facing, um, you know, are, are trying to make rapid changes to their, to their lines and to, and to even their products to, to meet, you know, the, the current crisis and the current demand. But right now, supply chain for stuff like medical supplies, you know, whether it's masks or ventilators, is, is bogged down. And like you said, a lot of businesses in the United States and in Canada as well are shifting their operations to see, you know, how much of this production you can take on. What do you guys think the impact of that is going to be? Like, uh, this thing might go on for a year, some experts are saying, but I'm sure... The, the companies that are shifting their operations and expanding to be able to, to be able to help out the populations are going to see some kind of an impact long term. Anytime that someone's able to to make a rapid shift in their, you know, in their supply chain and in their in what they're manufacturing in their line is 
know, training for the next time is training for the next new product launch and is training and is the organizations that are, you know, that are staying out in front of this and that are making those changes are going to be the ones that are in the best position to, you know, for the recovery and for when business, you know, returns to normal and for just doing business now. What do you think goes into the shift of changing your operations to be able to take on the demand for medical supplies? So I think that there's a lot of people who are making those changes and are, are, you know, are going to be, are going to learn very quickly, you know, if they have the systems in place to handle it, if they have the, the change management in place to handle it. And, you know, we're seeing some really, really wonderful things. Uh, you know, a local company near me, a, a Connecticut ventilator manufacturer is going to be producing 5X what they, what they do in a normal month. Um, you know, and, and the ramp up is, is phenomenal. So those people have added two shifts. They're, you know, they've brought in extra help. They have other manufacturers in the area that are loaning them staff. So we're, we are seeing those things. It's not just systematic changes or inventory changes. It's personnel all the way through. I mean, what, what do you guys think are some of the technologies? If you had to make recommendations as experts, right? What do you think are some of the technologies uh, that, that CEOs and, and companies in general should be looking at right now? I think, I mean, it all starts with, with getting, your, getting your inventory and getting an ERP that, um, getting your inventory properly categorized in your system, having an ERP that has, you know, flexible supply planning and that can do, and that can do supply planning, you know, based on multi-scenario, based on things like linear regression, based on things like, uh, you know, your, your basic sales forecast. You know, NetSuite obviously does that extremely well. But for people who have a requirement that's, uh, you know, that's not fulfilled by that or who have other needs, there's several best of breed uh, third parties that, you know, we at Gurus can integrate and that people can deploy to, to manage supply and demand however they need. All the stuff that you're inputting into your system should, uh, should then be used to put on easy to use reports, easy to read reports, live reports that can allow you to make uh, intelligible intelligent decisions um, about, you know, what you should be investing on, what is a winner, what's a loser, and, you know, the changes that you should be making long-term. And it's funny you say that because if we had, uh, if we went through a similar pandemic as recent as 10 years ago, um, we, we would not have the technology in place to get us out of it, right? We would not have the technology in place to, to start making the changes and put into effect the, even the operational side of things. Something like something like COVID right now is really a global event, and it's it's impacting not only many industries but the global economy as well. And you, I don't think you go for an event like this without having some kind of takeaway or learning something. Staying a little bit on the positive side, uh, what do you guys think are some of the big takeaways that many industries will have after this thing is done? We're seeing, you know, who is well positioned and companies that have embraced cloud technology and mm-hmm. things like that are, are certainly faring significantly better than others. So I think that uh, it will further reinforce the case for, for modernization and for embracing systems like that. I think also, you know, as people look for supply shocks and uncertainty in the future, you know, people look to get efficient, people look to, to make investments that are are going to reduce the workload for your staff, are going to allow you to, to do more with less. And so I think automation is, is a place that we're going to see growth because people are, are dealing with this current shock and they're saying, hey, how can I automate this with a workflow? How can I you know, free my people up to, to deal with those critical shortages that Jorge was talking about? And mm-hmm. so I think that that's going to be one of the, the big winners. Again, like without the cloud, uh, we would not necessarily have that same bounce back that we're looking at right now you know staying positive it looks it looks like if we're moving into that direction and accelerating um migration to the crowd to accelerating a business migration to the cloud um that i we're i think at the right place at the right time so dave Jorge, thank you so much for joining us today um you know i think we addressed a lot of great points and i hope that it's going to bring a lot of value to some of our listeners um happy to have you guys on board anytime for future podcasts hope you had a great thank time you. thank you thanks, thanks a lot thanks, guys we really appreciate it Absolutely. Sure. bye guys bye guys